From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. The gloves came off in the 2020 presidential race today. Democratic challenger Joe Biden accusing President Trump of fanning the flames of violence in this country rather than fighting them. And President Trump punching back saying Biden shared an agenda with the rioters. The president, meanwhile, will go to Kenosha, Wisconsin tomorrow, despite local leaders' fears that that visit may increase tensions in the city where Jacob Blake was shot last week. Deborah Alfarone has the latest from Washington. As protests continue in cities like Portland, Oregon, and Kenosha, Wisconsin, President Trump is making it clear which side he's on. Those on the left are the problem, and Antifa is the problem. At a White House briefing on Monday evening, the president said Democratic leaders are allowing demonstrators to destroy their cities. The violence is fueled by dangerous rhetoric from far left politicians that demonize our nation and demonize our police. The president said he's going to Kenosha to thank the law enforcement officers and National Guard members who responded to the protests that followed the Jacob Blake shooting. However, the president will not be meeting with Blake's family. I thought it would be better not to do anything where there are lawyers involved. Uh, they wanted me to speak, but they wanted to have lawyers involved, and I thought that was inappropriate, so I didn't do that. President Trump's comments come after his Democratic rival Joe Biden delivered a speech that accused him of spreading fear and inciting violence. Fires are burning and we have a president who fans the flames. At a campaign event in Pittsburgh, Biden condemned the violence in Kenosha and elsewhere. Rioting is not protesting. Looting is not protesting. Setting fires is not protesting. Biden also condemned the president's handling of the unrest. This president long ago forfeited any moral leadership in this country. He can't stop the violence because for years he's fomented it. President Trump dismissed what he called a strange speech by Biden, noting that the former vice president never mentioned Antifa. Deborah Alferone, CBS News, Washington. President Trump briefly discussed Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17-year-old accused of fatally shooting two people during the demonstrations in Kenosha. The president said it appeared the teen was being attacked and his life was in danger. He went on to say police are still investigating the shootings. Across the state today, Montana health authorities reported another 82 confirmed COVID-19 cases. Plus, late this afternoon, we've learned our late this afternoon, we learned of a death in Bighorn County. That death, a man in his 70s, is the county's 16th death. As far as cases, 27 of those are from Yellowstone County, 13 from Bighorn County. There are nearly 2,000 active cases right now in the state, 106 deaths so far and 134 people are hospitalized. Montana bars and casinos may be open for business, but the governor's phase two COVID-19 guidelines remain in effect. So what happens if a business doesn't follow the directives? Q2's Andrea Lutz digs into that very question and learns just because a complaint is made, there's not much legally that can be done about it. At Warden's Casino up in the Billings Heights, machines have been going dark at 1230. When the governor rolled out his guidance, we we did take it very seriously. But it's not because Josh Benson, who owns six casinos in Billings, wants it that way. He says for now it's in the best interest of his business. Getting back to normal is as fast as we can is my top priority right now. A top priority because each day he's losing out on customers. When businesses around us stay open until 2 o'clock, uh, when we close at 12.30, we do lose business. Um, customers will leave our establishment uh, even before 12.30 to ensure that they um, get a seat at a casino or a, a gambling machine um, at 12.30. It's because Benson says they're following the state's COVID-19 safety directive. So when he's witnessed others not doing the same thing, he's expressed frustration to the city, to the county, and even to the state. You know, they they essentially said that they've received a lot of complaints. Um, they have forwarded them all to the county attorney, but as to their knowledge, they nothing has been done about it as of yet. Riverstone Health officials say when a complaint comes in regarding a business they license, they have an investigative process. On the first complaint, health officials call and ask for compliance. On the second, the establishment is visited and asked to sign an agreement to comply. But by the third complaint, it's handed over to the county attorney's office. You know, nothing's ever going to be 100% perfect and there are always 
exceptions, there are always situations that come up. But I, I think for the most part, bars and restaurants have really excelled at, at trying to um, adhere to these requirements of, of doing everything they can because they want to keep their patrons safe, too. In-house counsel for Yellowstone County, Gina Lervik, takes it from there. Almost all of the complaints have been ones that we've been able to resolve by, by talking with folks. And, and really, that's what the governor's orders had contemplated, which helps it out a lot. The governor's directive doesn't allow a complaint to actually result in the citation. So instead, repeated violators would have to be charged criminally in court. That also means the case would have to be strong enough to do so. Because it's that significant of an issue, we're also very careful in making sure that we're following all of our requirements that, that we're dotting I's and crossing T's and making sure that um, all avenues have been closed first. Lervik says they aim to do public education first, which she believes has been successful. So far in Yellowstone County, there's been upwards of 990 complaints made concerning businesses and individuals not following the guidelines. Zero have been formally charged. Lervik says instead they've been warned and given a plan to work out the misunderstanding. But that's exactly what Benson says has him frustrated with the process. You know, ultimately there's been a spike in Yellowstone County's COVID numbers, and um, I believe the health officer even related some of that surge to a couple of bars in town. Again, his worry? The guidelines are in place with little to no enforcement of them. If we're going to continue losing money, um, and not being able to employ our staff, we may be forced to stay open until 2 o'clock if the county or the local police department chooses not to enforce uh, the governor's guidelines. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Now, Andrea also checked in with the Montana Tavern Association officials to see what sort of complaints are coming their way on the state level. In a statement, officials say they encourage all tavern operators to follow the laws in place. Well, here's something that you don't see every day. Last Tuesday, the giantess geyser in Yellowstone Park roared back to life after a period of more than six and a half years without erupting. The giantess geyser is located in the upper geyser basin of Yellowstone National Park. It's known for its infrequent eruptions and violent shakes when it does erupt. Attorney Chief wow. Forecaster Bob McGuire and Bob, last day August, and some parts of the state saw their first snow. It is hard to believe because all of a sudden, it's summer, right? And then today's August 31st, and, and this is what happened. Check this out. Look at this. We're a big sky, and look at the snow falling there. And as you can see, in some places, they had a little bit of snow. But how cold was it? Well, let me show you. We had a pretty cold night last night. Places like uh, Livingston had 35 degrees. It was 38 over in Bozeman here in Billings. We thought we were cool at 46 degrees. Turned out we were one of the warmer ones. Helena was the warmest spot in the state this morning at 52 degrees. But you can see up in the northeast corner of the state where they had clear skies last night. They dipped back down into the 30. So uh, the good news here is that we are going to warm up. We do have some warmer temperatures, but today sure didn't feel like the last day of August and certainly doesn't seem like summer's over with. And we got maybe one more week before Labor Day. That's the unofficial closing of summer. We'll have the forecast coming up in a few more minutes. Thank you, Bob. COVID-19 is not putting a stop to adding new seasonal flights to and from Billings Logan International Airport. American Airlines will add direct flights to Phoenix, Arizona starting this November. And those flights will run until March of 2021. Airport Director Kevin Plone says he was surprised to hear about the additional flights, but says it's likely due to the popularity of the destination. Phoenix is one of our larger winter markets, actually. Um, in some cases, it's, you know, if you add up all of the Phoenix destinations, we end up with close to that being our top market for certain months of the year. So I think this is a, a good play on their part. Um, you know, I think uh, a lot of people are going to use it, and you know, we're very excited about it. So, Flone says the new seasonal routes will give residents an opportunity to easily escape the winter months for a little getaway. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2. It might be flying under the radar, but that doesn't mean it's any less important. Up next, we're going to break down the race for a contested seat on the Montana Supreme Court. Then a little later in sports, they were tired of their town drying up during the pandemic, so they started their own rodeo. Scott will take us to Big Timber coming up.